Please, 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 if somebody comes up to you and offers you a dollar to solve a circuit that's just got a bunch of resistors in it, please, please, please do that by using the uh, V is IR business and, um, and going around and figuring out the equivalent resistances, series, parallel, etc. It's so much easier than what I'm about to show you. But if you've got such a nasty circuit that actually has a couple different batteries in it, like this one, you've got a circuit like this maybe, and maybe there's this other resistor over here, I don't even know. This circuit can't be solved with equivalent resistances because you've got a battery here and a battery here. So for that you need Gustav, or as we call him, Gustav Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff's laws are statements of, well, I'm not gonna let you use them until you understand what they are. So let's put them down here. This guy in the 1800s was thinking about, he was thinking about, <clears throat> Excuse me. He was thinking about circuits a lot, and he came up with these two rules. Rule number one says that, well, it's called the junction rule. And the junction rule says that for all the currents entering or leaving a particular junction, their sum must be zero. And I guess I want to say that a current is greater than zero if, if, uh, ooh, if it enters a junction and the current is less than zero if it leaves a junction. So what I'm saying is for any junction, a wire here, a wire there, a wire there, heck, you could have four wires. I'm going to assert that if there's current going in, then that current also has to go out, and it's sort of a river, right, flowing this direction and forking in three directions, or you could also have a crazy situation where there's current coming in from here and current coming in from there, and it might go out here and go out there. I don't even care, but my point is, if you don't require that current going in also somehow leaves net, then you will have current pooling up at this little junction, charge rather, because current is the motion of charge, you'll have charge pooling up at that junction, and by diarrhea, it is not possible. You know that there must be a steady flow through. Diarrhea forbids any violations here. So really, Kirchhoff's junction rule is simply a statement of the conservation of charge. All right, and then there's also Kirchhoff's loop rule. Kirchhoff's loop rule says that as you go around a circuit, let's say we'll, got it, we'll start out with a simple circuit, right? As you go around this simple circuit, which we could solve and should solve by the other method, if you go around this circuit in a loop like this, you could call that loop one. If you go around that circuit in loop one, then you will find that the potential here is the same the first time you go around as it is the second time you go around. A way to mathematically say that is that the sum of all the potential changes is zero. So here, as I'm going around this direction, the potential is going to rise as I go through the battery. It will go probably from zero volts up to whatever the voltage of the battery is. Let's call it 12 volts. So we'll go to 12 volts right there. And then as I go through a resistor in the direction of the current, current's going that way, right? As I go through the resistor in the direction of the current, I'll get a voltage drop equal to IR right here. And so I'll have a lower voltage here. And as I continue my loop, I will drop the voltage again through that resistor. And the statement of Kirchhoff's loop rule is that when I get here, I'm at zero again. So a complete loop doesn't change the voltage. Not only would it be sort of MC Escher-esque and inconsistent, you know, the ever ascending staircase or something, if the voltage would change every time you go around a loop. Shoot, I'd just go around a loop 100 times and get a really high voltage and make a bunch of money. Ha! But it's also a statement of the conservation of energy. Because charge times voltage is energy, you, um, <clears throat> well, you better have the same voltage every time your charge gets right here because you've got the same energy. So this battery is giving energy into the system and these resistors are taking it away as heat. So this statement right here says that if you're, ooh, we have to, you know, it's my preference to define zero right before the battery but we're about to solve one really soon that has the voltage 
Oh, it has two batteries, really. That's what I'm hoping to do. So let us phrase that question and then we can go to it. But I just, I guess I should use the same pink font again and say uh, that this is conservation of energy. And this is conservation of charge. Please make sure that you know why these statements are true. And what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a set of equations. If there's a junction and another junction, then we'll solve both of those junctions. Oftentimes they'll be redundant. You notice there's a loop here. There's also another loop here. And then there's a third loop that goes all the way around. So there are really three loops in these problems, this problem particularly, but again, two of them are redundant to each other and they reduce back to just two separate equations. So we'll find that because there are three separate currents, there's a current here, a current there, and a current there that could be in principle different from one another, we will really only have three equations because we have three unknowns. So the beautiful thing about this is it gives you a set of equations and if you're adept at solving sets of equations, what do you like? You like um, using matrices for that? awesome. But if you're not adept at solving systems of equations, you'd better hope that there aren't two batteries because then you can go back and you can always do your um, equivalent resistances. So let's pose the problem that we're going to solve in the next video. The problem is as follows. I have a, uh, I'll try to keep it confined to one side so in the next video I can do this. I'm going to have a battery here and I'm going to come over to a resistor and I'm going to close in with another resistor and I'm going to give you this battery, let's call this battery 12 volts right here and then I'm going to make this other, ba uh oh, another battery and this one's facing the wrong direction, right? If it were facing only one direction then we would have that band but we don't because it's facing the other direction. So this guy's positive over here and negative over there. I'm hoping that we can solve, I'm going to give this guy 15 volts, let's call this, what do you want to do, 22 ohms here and 22 ohms there and 22 ohms there. That'll make it a little bit easier. But we have to use Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's rules for solving the circuit because these two batteries make the potential differences, well, strange. We don't know. We could call this zero, but then what's that going to be over there and that and that? Oh, man. Yeah, good luck.